Um, All right, continuing with our uh, trusty, trusty new game plusing. Today we are going to do bot, bot. Don't start off as a bot. Uh, yeah, it's two parts: one for the R thirty, and another which goes up to which is the first part of actual bard upgrade to bard so we're going to do both of those yeah i'm trying to it's like lights to try to stay very warm i'm also making tacos at the exact recipe because uh, i realized i didn't have everything i needed for that but that's okay it's fine we're going to start off as an archer and we do that in gridania I'm in a Gridanian in room. Barely seen. It's a little lighter before, but probably just because I'm being lit by computer screen. I decided to mog myself. Okay, so it's not mog because mog is uh Mog is a, a World of Warcraft term, but I'm going to continue calling it Mog. Grand's Mog. This is actually the level 60 gear. I really like, I actually kind of like this set. The bow is actually comes with the level 70 set. But I didn't really like that level set as much. So we're going to... So you want to be an archer. Oh, yeah. Back to Lucien. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, not talk to her. I gotta talk to the receptionist first. Greetings, Venture, and welcome to the Archers Guild. It is here the Archers that the realm over gather to master the bow. We engage the enemy from a distance after seeking to alter the course of the battle with a single well placed arrow. If you have a mind to become an archer, then you have come to the right place. You wish to join our ranks? Marvelous. Then allow me to enlighten you on the history of both of our art and the guild. The bow is in ancient tool that has existed since before our fair nation became into being, as an implement of war and hunting both. It protects us from our enemies, even as it keeps us fed and clothed. Archery was practiced in Gridania for both of... was born of two distinct styles of bowmanship. The first was divided by the longbow centuries of the Elizen, who had once ruled the lowlands, while the second belonged to the shortbow hunters of the formerly nomadic Mikote. As you may, will doubtless be aware, both races ultimately came to call the Twelves Wood home. Though the two peoples began as rivals, they gradually learned to live together in harmony. During this time, they learned from one another. Their two schools of archery intermingled to give birth to the art that is, as it is known today. Ah, but this is, wouldn't be as possible were it not for the Trapper's League. The guild was established in order to promote sustainable hunting in co cooperation with the hunting fraternity at large. As a happy coincidence of the Union, the guild members came to engage in friendly contests of skill. Inspired by such competitions, a handful of their number began to focus on perfection as opposed to mere practicality, a transforming a skill into what may be termed an art. These individuals would go on to form a guild of their own. 
by the Artist Guild, where men and women gather to attain mastery of the bow, more than a few of the gods' quiver loose their first arrow from them. And that, my friend, is a brief history of archery in Gardania. Doubtless you are more eager than ever to take up the bow. It would be my pleasure to recommend you to our guildmaster. You must receive her permission if you are to join us. If you would excuse me a moment, I shall see to it that the relevant lists are amended. And pray speak to me again in a short while. So, are you resolved to join the Ar Archer's Guild? Look in your eye, bespeaks your determination. It would be my pleasure to refer you to Guildmaster Lucienne. Unless you worry unduly, Lucienne is an affable and kind-hearted woman. Even the, those not of the Guild have been known to seek her counsel for various matters, and even have they been given fair hearing. Lucienne awaits you in the training area yonder. Present yourself before her and impress upon her your desire to join the Guild. So here we come to like a bunch of sequence and also some repeat some quests which we'll tend to repeat as we do other jobs. Or similar repeats. Greetings, Venture. I'm told you wish to join our ranks. I am Lucienne, the master of the Archer's Guild, and I bid you welcome. Our doors are open to all who have the will to learn. Allow me to explain the basics of our art and offer you a foretaste and what on that which we teach the members of our guild. The bow's greatest advantage is its range. Unlike those arm, arms used in other disciplines of war, it allows one to strike at the enemy from afar. Though the bow may not boast the destructive force of a sword or a spear, its myriad strategic applications more than compensate for their shortcoming. An inexperienced archer can mobilize an enemy by striking a leg or sap its strength with a poisoned arrow. Rise to become a virtuoso of art, and a veritable deluge of death will be yours to rain down upon your foes. By fighting from a distance, you, are better ac you can better assess the battlefield and therefore determine the most advantageous course of action. This is of paramount import, as our role in battle is to exploit the enemy's weakness, with the requisite placement and timing, but a single arrow may serve to turn the tide. To this end, the guild seeks to instill a discerning eye, within, discerning eye within its members that you might learn to strike at vulnerabilities swiftly and surely. Now, any half-wit can bend a bow, but, not a, but it is no simple undertaking to become a skilled archer. You must be prepared for a long and arduous journey. Are you resolved to complete that journey? That is well. From this moment forth, you can consider yourself one of our number. Now, lend me your hunting log. Uh, if you would, I shall add to it the names of some creatures that would provide a fitting challenge to a hunter. And to help you on your way, I bestow upon you this short bow. Arm yourself with your new weapon and speak to me again. I would have you undertake a trial to gauge your fitness to join the guild. problem. Don't worry about this. <laughs> let, let me see. Can I, can I, can I still use my... I can't because I'm not barded! Okay. So I just lost a bunch of abilities. I need to adjust some, a few things. <laughs> Apparently I have to do all this. Yeah, this is all the abilities I have. Have when it comes to Archer. Um...
A lot less abilities. And now I don't have a <laughs> have a mock. Uh, I will stick with what I have. The sandwich is to, to gauge your abilities in her. Ah oh, yes, the bow becomes you, Elagos. Now before proceeding any further, I must it needs gauge your innate aptitude for archery. To this end, I hereby assign you the following trial. Play the squirrels, ladybugs, and fulgars at that room just beyond the city gate. Three of each should suffice. In doing so, you will prove your fitness to join the archer's guild. It goes without saying that you must do so using your bow. Well, back to me when the task is accomplished. Go now, I'll go and then your place for calls. Where do they want me to sit down that's around? It should be really quick. Because I am... That's like our work. Hey, I heard several things. Nice and quick. Still has me use my flute when I peloton. It, let me show you this. As a bard, when I hit peloton. Oh, and I got lag. Well, crap. to run. Well, such is life and the uh, on weekends in Final Fantasy, I suppose. You know, one way to, to kind of break the, the lag is...
sometimes. By the way, if you if you didn't see the 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 uh, latest live letter happened last night, and they released the job action trailer for uh, and Walker and oh, the cool stuff. Monk is getting a rework, man. My favorite class for a job. Actually, so I would say with Peloton, and I hit Peloton, the flute and dance. Because I'm not a bard yet, I'm just an archer, but I have Peloton. Get Peloton. Peloton you get at 20. Even before you become a bard. Anyways, back to Lucian. Welcome back, Elegos. So it seems that you have successfully completed the trial. I have proven yourself worthy of a place in these halls. It is with pleasure that I name you an archer of the guild. As fellows of the path, let us together strive for greater mastery of our art. No, so, no. Now, though, you will may be a member of the Archer's Guild. Know that your seniors will not coddle you with personal attention. It's up to you to seek out the experiences you grow as an Archer. By way of the first step, I encourage you to pr practice proper technique. Loose arrow after arrow, paying close attention to form until the movement becomes second nature. When drawing your bowstring has become as natural to you as a drawn breath, the world seems clearer than when viewed down the shaft of an arrow. Return to me. Go well, my young apprentice. Good evening to you, Elegos. I felt that it was about time you returned. Have you grown more accustomed to the bow? Before you go any further, I wish you ensure that you have grasped the fundamental essence of archery. Tell me, Elegos, you truly understand what it is, lady. To see clearly is not merely to look, to observe with intent. Fail to do it, and no matter no amount of talent with a bow will avail you. An archer must remain vigilant in any trace of the spark or any trace of its target, overlooking not the smallest detail lest it prove crucial in the realization of its purpose. You must, in short, see clearly. The coming task will test your powers of observation. A number of targets have been hidden throughout the city. Have you seek, the, seek them out and destroy them? Each will fall easily to your heavy shot technique. When you have uh, completed this task, return to me and we will continue.
Ah, you have returned. I trust you have begun to comprehend the crucial importance of seeing clearly. The next trial will test your powers of observation in battle. Travel to the North Shroud and there put down eight microchus or cos and eight up opos. In contrast to the inanimate and wholly unthreatening targets of the previous trial, these creatures may be riled up riled upon to move around and move right back. Nor are the, those the very only differences. Being comparatively numerous, microcos and opa opas are anything but difficult to find. And yet, you may be assured that this task will test your powers of observation, albeit in a different This time, you will need to evaluate the abilities of the opponent. In doing so, you will learn, amongst the other things, the micas uh, use a poison that can quickly sap one's strength, while opa opas, like archers, possess advantage of range. Knowing their strengths, how will you, will you go about mitigating them? If you commence your attack before identifying an effective strategy, you will soon be able to be made to regret your folly. If you take the time to observe your target from afar, you will surely glean the knowledge necessary to defeat them. Look forward to hearing your success. Sigurd. Level 73 Archer makes quick, quick work of them. These may go quicker than our crafty. Leveling. Mainly because I don't have to actually search out like Welcome back, Alegos. Tell me, 
You're able to put your techniques to good use. When faced with an enemy who can attack from a distance, simply raining arrows upon it is wasteful and dangerous both. Battle more than a contest of strength. By employing appropriate technique, however, one can bring down one's foes with greater ease and fewer arrows. For instance, you may choose to prime your weapon well and strike hard, or employ toxins to sap their strength over time. On the assumption that, that this fact dawned upon you prior to the fall of your 16th target, I congratulate you on passing the trial. Yeah, Sylvia, what is your honest evaluation? Not bad, if you ask me. The adventurer pulls up a good bow and is enthusiastic besides. A pleasure to meet you. My name is Leah Alepo, and this is Lepo. Lepo. And this is my second year in the guild. It is quite plain that you are talented with the bow. You must take care, but you must take care of, to mind your surroundings when doing a target. I had my eye on you in the duration of your trial, but not once did you notice my presence. Mind your surroundings. That is rich, coming from you. Your every movement is wasteful, Ventra. Your back is crooked, elbows misaligned. You an age to prime your bow and twice as long to loose an arrow. Summary, you fail on all, account, all accounts. You have no talent as an archer. None whatsoever. I say, say plain, Lucien. This man is not fit to wield the bow. For our sake and his, who broke his membership. I've always said others can scarce be expected to understand. Never mind master, noble art. You waste your... Our breath trying to teach his love. Well, allow me to introduce you to Sevier. and comrade at the butts. The fellow was once, once at the gods quiz where you, and he can be a little opinionated when it comes to archery. Oh, and you mustn't pay him any, any heed. He's like that to everyone. You'll be lucky to just You'd be lucky to get much sense out of a fossil-brained wood, wildwood elizen like him in this, the best of times. With them, it's always 12 words this, and elemental stat, and... Oh, um, no offense intended, Lucien. None taken, dear. Yeah, I know full well what kind... That some of my kind can be prideful to excess and intolerant of other races. Although people can... Be May behold the same object. It ever will they see different things. There is no right or wrong to it, for it is a question of perspective. What matters is the perspective you to adopt. You are you are possessed with bright eyes, Elagos. I said be speak great understanding. They shan't lead lead you astray, so trust them. But they Go oh, now. Resume your training. Look forward to marking your progress when next we meet. I will never get consistent voice. I can almost guarantee that. Alright. Then... Pleases me to see how you have grown as an archer. Mainly you have taken your counsel to heart and learned to, to see through your own eyes. I would now have you discovered what it means to behold things from a different standpoint. You will recall the uh, Aleppo's, uh, Leah Aleppo, your senior in the guild. I have given you over to her care for the, this lesson. Speak with her and do as she bids. I have been expecting you, Alagos. Uh, shall we get to it then? First, a quick review. Remember how the Bowmaster had you seek out and destroy targets in throughout the city? Well, I would have you do the same. This time, however, you will need to venture outside the gates. I'm sure you'll realize this by now, but there is no guarantee of safety within the Twelveswood. As you search, search, you should take care to mind your surroundings. You won't have the luxury of focusing solely on your quarry this time. You'll have to keep your eyes peeled for potential threats as well. 
That said, your objective is to destroy the targets alone. No, so avoid unnecessary combat and maintain a safe distance from any hostile creatures you encounter. Should you come under attack, take to your heels, risk direct confrontation only if you can't outrun your pursuers. Targets are hidden in the central crowd. As before, use the heavy shot technique to destroy each one with a single arrow. Go well, Elegos. It'll be a lot easier because I'm level 73, so I won't aggro anything. Well, yeah, well, you made short work of those targets, I must say. It seems you have learned to seek your prey without being preyed upon. Let's continue, then. I have a mind to give you more practical experience than I received a request most recently that I think will provide the perfect opportunity. It seems tree slugs and vultures have been congregating in ever-increasing numbers in the vicinity of the honey yard, causing no end of trouble for the locals. We have been tasked with culling the beast. This request comes direct from Still, Still Glade Fane. World Wailers and the God's Quizzer cannot spare the forces to attend to such matters. The conjurers often ask, turn to us for help. And before you ask, there's no reason why, why they would rather not see this particular task themselves. The creatures in question possess abilities which can cause problems for the magically inclined. But that, that quite, and that's quite enough about Conjurer's Troubles. Lucian taught you how to discern an enemy's key traits, did you not? Well, now you'll need to do so while maintaining situational awareness. You will be overrun. Consider this a comprehensive review of your lessons and your lessons of mine own. Your orders are as follow. Head out into the East Shroud and there put down eight tree slugs and eight vultures using all of the skills you have acquired thus far. Hunting elegance.
This is all basic training. Oh, yeah, we get more story driven stuff as we go up in level. Judging by your smug impression, I say that you acquired a feel to the maneuvering to exploit enemy weaknesses and whilst covering your own. Vultures are one to keep their opponents at wing's length and their attacks will send you flying. The solution for this is simple maneuver to the rear. These slugs, on the other hand, have an annoying knack of disrupting spellcasting with their secretions. As such, we would would do well to keep the creatures away from any mages in your party. Nevertheless, needless to say, both positioning is the key to success in battle, and, which is why it is absolutely essential that you know your target's traits. The knowing of these traits is a fundamental part of hunting. Before keep, keepers of the moon, before the keepers of the moon con conceived of archery, they dwelt not in the city but the forest. For my people, hunting was a way of life. Hmm, in hindsight, I suppose this is more of a lesson on hunting than in archery. Still, Lucia knows well my past. Mayhap that was her intent. Hunting, too, is an art. Before I came to Gordania, I never gave it much thought, but the one, the more I think of home, the more I begin to realize. <laughs> Forgive me. It is not given to fits of sentiment. Truly, really, forget I said anything. But do not forget that a hunter must recognize its its prey weaknesses and strikes swiftly when the opportunity presents itself. That concludes the lesson. Now I suggest you pay Luciana a visit. She is doubtless eager to hear from you. It is good to see you, Alagos. I hope you have learned much from Leah. You, adventurer, is it true? Are you the one who slew the tree slugs and vultures? Uh, yeah. How dare she entrust the security of our people to the hands of a stranger? Even Mikote was a little reckless, but she is down downright irresponsible. Came on her. Did I not warn you that I was fully to suffer through that woman's presence in our guild, Lucienne? Every time she wa wastes an arrow in game, she she drags all noble art back into the darkness. Aye, and this boy too, he is an embarrassment to us all. That is quite enough, Sylvia. Your skill with the bow is undeniable, as is your love for our nation. Yet there is much and more you have yet to learn about archery. Elagos has matured greatly in the short time that he's been with us. Do you know this to be true? I suggest you come to terms with Elagos' presence here. You will be giving him his next lesson after all. Unless, of course, you have any objection. But as for you, Elagos, I would have you devote yourself wholly to training ahead of your lesson with Sylvia. Yeah. Suffice it to say, he will not be an easy instructor to impress. On um, that, we can agree. Welcome back, Elagos. I trust you have been keeping your nose to the grindstone. As I mentioned when last we spoke, you will train under Sylvia's tutelage today, but aside your put aside your misgivings and avail yourself with his wealth of experience. Go now, present yourself before him. <laughs> I see it was too much to hope that you would not return. Others believe you are potential, but I am not so easily convinced. So, like so many adventurers, you have not the faintest inkling of what it means to be an archer. How could you? Archery is the proud tradition of the Wildwood Elizen. The essence of this art, read one's enemy, has been instilled in us over centuries. In that time, you have def defended our great nature and against every imaginable foe granted us insight which you will never possess. Can you recognize the subtle signs that betray a coming action? No. Can you accurately predict an opponent's movement? No. Can you glean your your foe's intention at a glance? No. And can such things be learned by one who, who knows nothing of our traditions? No. Only out of respect of Lucien that I have agreed to teach you. Go to the shroud and seek out the target sitting there, but do not presume it will be as easy as before. As I told you, the ability to read one's enemies is fun 
fundamental to archery, yet the trial set by my colleagues did, do not require you to do this. Mine will. The targets you seek have been hidden, and I do mean hidden, in the midst of a region like rife of savage. They will play the part of your enemies. In the unlikely event that you spy a target, your limited range will be ne will necessitate that you slip past its beastly guardians prior to taking aim. Eat I consider consider beyond you. That a frown, I hope you were thinking that the Makoti set you a similar task. You are wrong. He merely he asked merely that you consider where your foes are. I demand that you discern discern precisely where they will be. How then will you go about this? Observe them closely and discern your their characteristics. Learn to read their movements and recognize patterns in the area. If it has eyes, let it not see you. If it has ears, let it not hear you. Be neither where it is nor where it means to be, and thereby pass an enough talk, whether or not you heed my counsels, your decision and no tear should fail. I don't know, they did put these in. So you return. Passable performance for an adventurer, but the bare minimum for any archer. Carry with me generations of wildwood traditions. A tradition built upon the bones of the many outsiders who tried to take what was ours. It is my, was my ancestors who first learned to conceal their presence and fight from the shadows, to hold the enemy at distance to protect the weak. All of it. Everything was... Ugh, this is a waste of time. You cannot understand. You have no intent upon following the footsteps of my people. Bid you to go to the North Shroud. All these scouts have been sighted near the the river west of Etot Spider. And unless you have uh, entirely ignorant of Gradonian history, I need not explain that this act of regression is part of a centuries-old conflict. The minions do not move. It is their leader, Nizul Katan the Violet, must fall. He commands the scouts and will be well guarded. Yet he stands upon hostile ground with birdmen and not walls for protection. You are diligent and determined. You can slip through their defenses and slay their leader. This is part of the Gritonian, the art of the Gritonian archer. Embrace the wisdom I have bestowed upon you and the fight will be short. Be the deed done, Venturer. I will take it as proof of your commitment to us and labor no more to drive you from the guild. Go.
He's a dick. Ooh. The duty. This will actually be difficult. Because it's going to sink me down. Guess I have to go through these guys. I did select very very kind of cheap. Ooh. I will assist you, Adventure. I got some slight experience from that. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering how Silver will uh, actually respond to that. You cheated. You got help from a Lancer. You also set the difficulty to very easy. I say you be cast out from the guild. Even though I struggle to credit the centuries reports, yet here you are in Azul Katan the Violators no more. Goddamn adventurer should be so. Only by the grace of Namir herself could you have survived. But even though it was pure luck, pure my word, Elagos, should you stay or should you go? You have completed the task with no longer my responsibility. Go now to Lucia and she'll be doubtless wish to lavish you with praise. Oh, get no more from me. I was given to understand you single-handedly drove off an Ixel scouting party, that you did so with precision and guile. How exactly was that training, Lucian? Elagos is just an adventurer, and Sylvia th thrust him into the jaws of the enemy in the hopes that he wouldn't come back. Here's the thing, adventurers, this is what they do. When you think about it, <laughs> adventurers, this is what they do. This is their job. This is how they get paid. And when, against all expectation, he did come back, that stubborn one still refused to acknowledge his skill. That truly your impression? Well, yes. He said it was pure luck. 
Who knows? Sophia sees Eligo Cecile, and that I have no doubt. Do not mark the way he covered his mouth when he uttered the words. It was a habit of his to do so on those occasions when his tongue and his heart were in disagreement. For all his skill of reading the idiosyncrasies of others, he has yet to recognize his own. Impressive work, Elegos. You have applied yourself to Leah's and Sylvia's lessons and demonstrated your command of the core concept. You are now an archer in your own right. Allow me to teach you something to commemorate this accomplishment. Repelling shot is an offense technique that enables an archer to evade attacks whilst continuing to fire upon their opponent. Used wisely, it can grant you a brief respite in the battle. Have faith that with regular practice, you will learn how best to employ it to your advantage. Remember your senior's lessons. Drive for true mastery. So this is one of the reasons why you do your job in class quests. Repelling shot, which is basically an action that allows me to look backwards. Jump 10 yelms away from the current target. I believe it also does. You come at a good time, Elegos. I have a task for you. A petition has arrived from the proprietor of Buscarin Druthers out in the South Shroud. The petitioner, Buscarin himself, has requested assistance in dealing with a gang of poachers. I would have the three of you meet with him and investigate his claim. The three of us? You mean Elegos, myself, and... Uh, better if I went alone, Lucien. The Makoti and the other one will only uncover me. Well, so yeah, you will go as three. Also, it is past time you recognize Elegos as a fellow archer. Not. Will not. Held my tongue in the matter of his continued presence here, and I will bend no further. Who in the seven hells do you think you are, O Lord Lewin? In case you've forgotten, you aren't even a quiver man anymore. It may be, but I have shed blood defending our borders, unlike you, savage. Savage? You know, you know nothing about me, you bigoted son of a... Enough! But one more word and you shall have to have cause to regret your petulance. Three of you will go to Druther... Miss Conan Struthers in the South Shroud. Out of my sight. Gotcha. Ah, you lot must be from the event, the Archer's Guild. Welcome, friends. Now, as your guildmaster will have said, I've put in a request for some keen-eyed archers to, to help me track down a gang of poachers that have been plaguing these parts. If I may, it is not uncommon to find poachers in this region. While regrettable, neither the God's Quiver nor the Wood Whalers deem them worthy of attention. Why, then, do you imagine them worthy of all? Because there ain't no common poachers. The Parak Magak. For jocks. They say she and hers are always moving, saying one half a step ahead, but I reckon she's hiding out here somewhere. Thing is, I can't just send my people out searching. I made a pact with the Red Belly Bandits. See, they stay out of their territory, and they don't have no trouble at the Druthers. Make no tr trouble at the Druthers. That being so, by some of the mass strengths of the whal Whalers and Quivermen, all summon hells would swiftly break loose. I mean, they thought the matter worthy of their attention, of course. Needless to say, it's not any option. Uh, it's not an option. Luck would have it, though. I've got three keen eye archers to take care of things instead. All without raising no. We understand. You may leave the matter to us. Here, Elegos, split up and scour the areas for any sign of the poachers. 
Should you discover anything, return here and wait. You need to configure, compare our findings are long. So. getting into more like story based stuff besides a test of your skill Our leg trap and a poacher's arrow. They're both evidence of illegal activity, but nothing that will help us find Mpawa. These meat bottles are but old refuse. Before the dress was, was even built, there's no connection to them. What do you know of this power wood? Sylvia? I know that she is the most infamous poacher ever to walk, walk the twelves wood. Born leader, deadly with bow, she formed her own gang of Makote hunters. She was apprehended once and would have been brought to justice had she not tricked, tricked a foolish young sentry into releasing her or vanishing without a trace. That's so. In any case, we've scoured the area and found nothing. How do we know that Pawa was ever even here? I say we informed the gods quiver and the wood whalers, taking care not to implicate Buscarin and leave the rest to them. This doesn't concern the archers. It concerns Gratania earlier. Pawam Ujuk is a savage and utterly amoral poacher whose actions, however indirectly, threaten the city's well-being. And what would be a vagrant like you know of a duty of one's homeland? No more than he expect. How dare you! And you, Elagos, see something. Time for this. Very well, we will return to the matter at hand. Yep, you should take a second look at the clues we have gathered. Look all you want, though the trap in the arrow we found, found suggests poaching, there is nothing remotely unusual about it. What do you think we, we should examine, Elegos? Bottles. Why are you still carrying the rubbish? I told you, these bottles predate the Druthers. There's no connection to this. But if these bottles are so old, why do they retain the scent of mead? They must surely have been opened recently. Right. Before the Calamity, Buscarin once served as a sentry. Yet even then, he sometimes spoke of owning his own tavern, and it was an open secret that he was brewing his own private stock. Some survived. Of course. And Scar, old lookout post. We must... It may not be uh, Pawa Mujuk. But we missed the best gate once. Yeah, let's do this in normal.
Any signs? Look, the ground is covered in Makoti footprints. These tracks are fresh, very fresh. Wager the bandits were alerted to our coming and fled, else they're hiding near. Take cover! Yeah. And there I was thinking we caught ourselves some of the meddling bloody m masqueraders. Not that I'm complaining, hiding your face down my bloody guru when you ain't been introduced. Baconville Manners, don't you know that it ain't decent to barge your way into a lady's bedchamber without knocking? You will lecture us on manners? Truly, I have heard it all. They have us out. We best split up. The leader's mine. Try to isolate her from her litter. Severe, Elegos, the rest I leave to you. You will. Green and Joe's there goes. This lot is quicker than the rest. Watch their movements and dodge their attacks. Oh, is that the last of them? Have you seen Aleppo? It's me, Elegus. That was a piss poor showing, sister. And you call yourself a keeper. A hunter with no fangs ain't nothing but prey. No. Ah, bugger. Like playtime's over. Be seeing you, sister. So in elves, they were at my old post and they drank my old mead. That brings most of, that stings most of all. Well, it is past time that the proper authorities were informed. Some messages to the wood whalers and the gold squiver. Red belly bandits won't like it one bit, but I'll see that they're told exactly who the mercenary is after. 
Hope it'll be enough. Of course, uh, Pobo Amajux is no fool. Now she knows she's been spotted, she'll break camp and be long gone by the time the new bell sounds. And the trail won't stay fresh long, neither. Anyway, they've done me a great kindness, friends. Uh, Lucien, I appreciate the help. I mean, there were questions there that, like, there was no follow-up to. Like, for example, uh, when Wa kept calling Leah, calling her Leah, uh, sister. Did I really mean it, or is it just because they're Makote sister thing? Welcome back, Eligos. Sevilla tells me that you encountered Pobal Majuk. No Godonian could fail to recognize that name, so oft as it is spoken, so much bitterness. I fear we lack the strength to face her ourselves, says the matter of the gods quivers and wood whalers. That you confronted her and survived is a testament of your growing mastery of art. Ah, no. Note that Leah and Sylvia are not at loggerheads upon Look okay, heads upon the return. I presume you, we owe this unnatural state of affairs to your coming. No? Modest to the last. Truly your ever de every deed bespeaks a vision of clarity of vision far beyond your years. I implore you to share that, that perspective with your peers and help them to grow to better life. As you go for, forth and temper your skills in battle, know that you'll always look forward to your return. Ah, Elegos, I had hoped you had come. We'd, you may be able to help. Concerned with Leon Sylvia, you show signs of losing perspective, and well, may happen it's best you see for yourself. I cannot help but feel that both can be fit from your. Consider this personal request, Alagos. Hmm? Oh, gods. Did Lucien send you to pester me by any chance? Hardly her concern. It's most definitely not yours. <sighs> if you must know, I have decided to leave the guild. I mean to track down Pawa Majuk. 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 And finish what we started. The gods quizzes wood willows seem content to ignore our warnings, and I will not let her escape again. I already made that request once, and it cost me my place at the gods quiz. I, the foolish young sentry of whom I once spoke? Me. At her ghost, there was no escape, and then when she began to wail about a wounded comrade, one who would surely die without her help, she looked me straight in the eye and begged. Failed to see through the most elementary Failed Gradonia and the God's Quiver. While they, that can never be forgiven, I can reclaim a measure of honor by stopping her. But a wanderer like you would not understand what it means to betray your people. Worry not. I do not intend to leave just yet. I will continue to gather information until I'm certain of Majuk's whereabouts. Make no mistake, though. There's only a matter of time. Run along, will you? Oh, if you have no concern about your fellow guildmates, you can tend to that moping Makote. The sight of her shuffling around will staring at her feet bad for morale. Not that it matters. Oh, it's you. Uh, tell me, Elagos, do you ever think about home? Do you ever wish you could go back? I mean, it's just another poor village in the Twelveswood. The fields were more stone than soil. And merchants hardly ever bothered to visit. We didn't have a lot, but we didn't need it. And then the calamity came. I remember running in the screams? How oh, loud, Helga. Unbearably loud. And then I was here in a strange city surrounded by more people than I ever seen. And I didn't even know any of them. But I knew how to hunt. Always good at hunting, Helga. 
And the guild gave me a place to make it be get better. At least I thought I was gotten better. He... Wak... Pawal... Majuk... Was so much more... I've been thinking, Elagos, that maybe this is a sign. Maybe Sylvia is right, and this guild, the city, is no place for an outsider like me. So I decided to leave. Glad to have known you, Elagos, even if it was only for a short while. Forgive me if this is too selfish of a request. Before I go, I'd like to meet with you. Alone in the South Shroud. These Gradanians would not... Yeah, I wonder why. I have quest. Archer. No! Don't hurt him! There I was, thinking you might have you might not accept my kind invitation. I don't recall inviting him though. It is rude to presume Sun Sunny and I presume Sunny. And I don't I do so hate rude. Wait, it's not his fault, it's mine. I invited him. He's a member of the Archer's Guild like me, and he's not Gradanian. Ah, I do begin to recall his face. I knows how to hold the bow, that one. Well, he ain't a typical recruit, but I reckon I might be willing to make an exception. No, no, it's not like that. I just, I wanted to say goodbye. Elagos, ever since I met Pua, been at a loss, but I realize now that my place isn't with the guild, the Gradanians. They'll never accept me. This is where I belong, with my people, carrying on our traditions, our archery. Not Cretanias. Well, I have left Elagos, so I'm going with Pua. Maybe you don't understand now, but I just promise me you won't tell Lucienne. The hell's I won't. Elagos! Huh, I think he might be harboring a few niggling objections. Sorry not, sister. Shoot the bastard! No! Ain't no love lost twixt ye and the guild, is there? And then what's the problem with feathering a bloody adventure? Bugger, I'll miss him. I'll miss him, all right. Just, just stop. Dear me, and I had some high hopes for you, Miss Aleppo. Waste of bloody time, a keeper that's lost in nerve. But not as much use to me as a glass bow. No sport in killing, killing captured prey. Ach. Better not see neither of ye again, because if I do, I'll show you, show you what happens to prey uh, staff enough to get caught twice. Away, sisters. Away. How do, you, how do you do it, Elagos? How do you live in this place with these people? And why do you even bother? What have they ever given you besides scorn? Well, what do you see in them, Elagos? Even though you joined the guild after I did, you've come so far, so quickly. Maybe you've even surpassed me. I want to know how you've done it. I have to know what it is that I'm doing wrong. And there's only one way I can think of to find it out. Meet me in the Banrock. Banrock. Shall we begin, Illigos? 
Then defend yourself. Show me what these people have taught you. I'm like, wait, what? Just like a Pokemon battle, you don't kill the Pokemon, you just knock them unconscious. <sighs> so simple. You have opened my eyes and looked beyond my master, your master's faults. You've accepted their teachings and taken them to heart. Even Sylvier, for all their bigotry, all of his bigotry, wishes only to preserve his traditions. I lost sight of everyone else's struggles and became obsessed with my own. I was so afraid to let go of my cherished notion of archery, my family's notion. And learn another way. I didn't want to betray them, dishonor their memory. But I have a family here too, a family that sees the wider world and is willing to show me how big blinkered I have become. As archers, we train our eyes and minds to be unforgiving. We defy any attempt at concealment to discern the naked truth. It is little wonder then that I have neglected to look inside myself until now. Though unquestionably worth Worthwhile, I have found the experience rather ruchier. <clears throat> Thank you, Elagos. I know now that I belong at the guild, together with you and Lucianne. Yes, even the bloody Wildwood. Gods help me. I think I might actually miss him. Ugh. Welcome home, Elagos. I need not, you need not say a word. One look at Leah's eyes was enough. Thank you for returning her to us. When we focus on a single goal and pursue it with passion and fervor, it becomes easy to lose sight on what else lies before us. With your skill and vision as Elagos, you can, you can help our fellow archers to look beyond themselves and remember their comrades. I hope I will, can count on you to support in the future. Oh, hi. Thank the gods you've come, Elagos. Perhaps you could talk some sense into this stubborn fool. Calm yourself, Sevilla. At least let us petition the order of the Twin Adder for... There is no time, Lucien. Pawa would be long gone before their forces had been even assembled. Alone, I can move more swiftly, taking these poachers by surprise and force them to divulge her location. We understand how you feel, Sevilla, but there is too reckless. At least permit Elagos and me to accompany you. You, the adventurer and the savage, you do not, cannot understand. Sylvia! 
But I do understand. I know what it means to take pride in your home, to want more than anything to protect it, and to be consumed by guilt when you cannot. See that you're going through, Sylvia. Sylvia? And I... I understand. This guilt taught me to open my eyes and see clearly. I beg you, Sylvia. Open your eyes. You have friends here. I need to fight. You have us. I have never considered you, my friends. Do not follow me. He did the hand thing. Well, he's lying, certainly. Hasn't approved. He honestly thinks he's doing us a favor by forbidding us from getting involved. He's an even bigger fool than I imagined. Come on, Legos, to the South Shroud! Charge! Find Sylvia. Quarry Mill. Sorry. Side thing. Uh oh. Normal. 34. <laughs> can I put on my, my job stone? Probably can't. Probably have to do that. Well, this is unfortunate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Elegos, I told you not to follow me. I neither need nor want. Don't take me for a fool. You cannot conceal the truth from this archer's eye. Elegos, the others are the others are almost upon us. We must make our stand here and protect Sylvia. That was pretty easy. I told you I need not I did not need nor want your assistance. 
What? Why have you deluded yourself into thinking? You're the one who's deluded in thinking you can deceive us when even a blind man can see that you cover your mouth every time you t tell a lie. Observe with intent, overlooking not the smallest detail, discern your subject's unique characteristics and recognize patterns in their behavior. I learned these things from Lucien and from you. And I'll be damned if I'm going to watch you get yourself killed. There's still so much I don't know about Catania and Wildwood Archery, so much that I... that I need you to teach me. Hmm. I suppose fixing your form is the least I can do. Why you... Wild's gang is already on the move. We have but one chance to catch them. Poachers throughout the Twelves Wood use bone whistles like this one to communicate. With it, I believe we can lure Poa out of hiding, assuming she is not moving on. But that's why you came to t take his rot. But this gang's whistle. Elgos, if you are determined to help me, I have a task for you. Poa is last seen near Isamha. To the east of the camp, sem through a hollow tree trunk is a clearing where the where two streams meet, and F's are wont to congregate. We'll lay our trap there, and you will be the bait. Do not fear, Elgos. I swear my honor as a Catonian archer that no harm will come to you. DD number two. Fox, I knew I shouldn't have trusted me got. Blokes just can't take a hint. I do hope you'll forgive my forwardness, madam. No, no, sir. Tis most flattering. Wouldn't you agree, sisters? Why don't you show our gallant wood wildwood admirer th and his mates just how much we appreciate their attentions? I hope you like it rough, darling.
And I thought you only had eyes for me. I can't. I won't. Back to Lucia, no like uh, after talk with the, with the the people who I've been going on adventures with. I think that ends up being something that's more happens like later on. They'll be like, okay, you finished duty, might as well talk about it before you like go off. Let's meet back at such and such. I'm relieved to see you again, Elagos. Had the three of you not been united in your purpose, Wamajuk uh, would still be free, and one or more of you would really be dead. I'm so proud of you, Elagos. Not only have you mastered our teachings, but you have also helped our guildmates regain the perspective that they had lost. For showing such a compassion for our peers, I wish to teach you a new technique, Windbite, which, happened, which is the ability I was using during that battle. With Windbite, you can bring the power of the very air around you to bear against your, your opponents. You will suffer. They will suffer so long as you have knocked your next. So and long after you've knocked your next arrow, if you serve, it will serve you well in battle. Certain. All archers walk the same path, Elagos. Towards improvement and discovery, as long as you have the vision to see the path ahead, you will continue to mature and excel. Yet, we will all grow weary and lose direction in time. When this befalls you, I have no doubt that you will find your way back to us. Trust in your eyes, Elagos. We'll never lead you astray. So, new game plus mode. DBS. Hard. Hard. Stay in Archer for a moment, because I th I don't think... Hold on, let me see what happens if I do this. If I barred up. Yeah, it says you have to be an Archer. Okay. Which, all it is is this Soul Stone, or, or the Soul of the Bard Stone. I just need to put that. Well, my Telegos, would you have the time to... Would that we would have the time for banter, but we are all up in arms here. Yet another exiled dirigible has been spotted over the twelves, would you see? Their appearance calls to mind the Battle of Griffin's Crossing. Well, I say battle, more as uh, are agreed that massacre would better be ra would rather be more would be rather more apt. I the Ixal dealt us a crushing defeat that day. Right after this red run this time of year it was more than two decades past. A humiliating episode in our history, to be sure, but heavens forbid that we ever forget it. Failure is the finest, if not the kindest, of teachers, when few things drive a man better than its sting. 
Ah, but do, but do let's speak of cheerier matters. Mayhap you've already heard, but a renowned archer was recently turn, returned to the Twelveswood, the one they called the God's Bow. This is just a title, of course. His birth name is Jahantal, and he was once a once of the God's Quiver. The man was a legend even then. There is no honor greater than being taken under his tutelage, and there's. And that's not all there is to him, mind you. Jehantel has is also a skilled bard, one of our bre one of the rare few c capable of inspiring others to great feats through song. Upon learning that the gods bow is returned, dozens of us flock to him in the hopes of training under our legend. Yours, inc yours included. Yours truly included. Alas, the meetings were unfolded quite as uh, hadn't unfolded quite as we had hoped. Hansel has refused to, t to teach in each and every suitor that has approached him. Though. Well, I should be mentioned that the topics he is reluctant to instruct us in do, do not include poetry and song. He seems exceedingly keen to teach us all, teach us all about them. There's some few of us are tempted to take him up the offer, save we have a nation to defend. Far be it, be it from my intent to, to belittle all those bards out there, but I'd like my chances with rather better char charging into battle with a quiver than a harp. And here we are hoping that a transcendent mastery of the bow might be ours. Hmm? The sparkle of your eyes, I bet you have an interest in the same of saying poetry and song. Come now, there is no call for shyness. There is more to life than battle. If you present yourself as a pupil of Jahantal, I happen to know his whereabouts. I'm given to understand that he has made his camp somewhere west of Quarry Mill in the South Shroud. Jahantal is, a, is an agreeable sort of fellow and should be willing enough to meet with you. Truth be told, I'm still holding on hope on to hope. If you can find a way in to Jahantal's co confidence, may happy is yet to be persuaded to train us. I wish you the best of luck, friend. Ah, oh, now I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Yeah. As far as I know, they don't. Uh, I. Yeah.
Here we go. Ah, another guest. You are kind to pay me a visit, young one. Not give us elderly folk more pleasure than the company of the young. Add to that a pot of tea in the beauty of twelve's wood, and we would want for a little more. Ah, but the curl of your lip tells me that tea in cider is not of your desire. You seek knowledge of archery, I take it? In which case, I'm afraid I must disappoint you. Goes with it. Yes, yes, I am Jehantil, the one they called the God's Bow, but that was in the life. I have long cast aside my bow, taking instead a half. Rest. For years I have lived as a bard, going wherever the wind blows, exulting in the beauty of creation song. To be sure, I still have the eyes to recognize a promising answer when I see one. And you, young one, have promise. Keep your nose to the ground zone, and one day you may count yourself a virtuoso as well. Yet, know that virtu virtuously, virtuosity is worthless virtue. Aye, the words of the ballad of the vainglorious fool tell us this much. Oh, can you tell me more? You truly wish to remain and learn poetry and verse? Well, well, well. I must admit to, to being rather taken aback. In uncertain days such as there are few indeed who would devote their time to song as opposed to more tangible endeavors. You intrigue me, young one. I find my, myself growing curious as to how the melodies of old might find expression. I do believe a certain friend of mine would be of the self-same opinion. Aye, that would be a good good place if any to begin. Listen well, Alagos. There is a Mughal named Puknopaki. Him off be found wandering in an area situated east of here. Have you present yourself to him? Puknopaki Pucky is possessed with the discerning eye for talent. These potential in you, I would well, well satisfied that you indeed have the makings of a bard. Heed me, O oh, poisoned Alik. Turn thee over the hourglass of time that we might gaze upon the battles of yore. The disappearance of background music doesn't back again. I would say that this probably has something to do with the fact that a lot of people are. Well, the lag is working itself out. Okay, uh, quickly checking my.
forgot to unmute myself. Sorry about that. That's a rare talent, I'll allow, but you you caught me at a bad time, Koopo. No. Well, I I I wish I was uh Koopo. Koopo. I think I'm getting used to to it being Koopo. Like Kopu. <laughs> Be a good adventurer and show yourself out. The Hansel sent you? You should have. The Hansel sent you? And she says that's a sooner Kupo. You do know that John Hansel is no ordinary bard, yes? His songs can salve your heart and strengthen your resolve. He can banish your fears and fill you with hope. And it's not even scratching the surface. Why is he. Why, to hear him perform is like bathing in sunbeams, Koopo. Now you've, I've asked, begged, and pleaded more times than I care to count for Jahantil to stay and sing in the forest. Only now as he's designed to set foot here again, but he's refusing to sing for us. It's a blatant breach of promise, Koopo. And what's this? Why, your, your being resonates with a chord similar to Jahantil's. Perhaps even identical, Koopo. By the twelve. This means that things may yet turn out as planned. Why, you might even have it in you to surpass the man. And that's saying a lot, Koopo. Oh, he gets. You're coming. Coming has so excited my predicament. And now I escaped my mind. The arm that was meant to, I had meant to give to Jen Hilti. Until set. You see? But it was stolen as I napped, Koopo. I roused just in time to espy the thief and attempted to give chase. At last, drowsiness robbed me of my balance, and I was delayed by this tree. Last I saw was that the over that overbold brigand he, or possibly she, was scurrying towards Taker's Rot. Kupo. Now I realize we, we've only just met, but would you mind recovering the charm and delivering to Jahantil in my stead? Have you recovered the charm? You did it, Kupo. And please, you do, you must not deliver. Must now deliver to Jahan Hill. Tell him that uh, Pukno Pak uh, thinks him a cunning rogue and is excitedly not excited nonetheless. So excited, in fact, that he cannot but help but sing, Kupo. Lo, 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 lo. Uh. I'm wondering if that was supposed to be, uh, was written after, uh, the Brololo meme came out. Welcome back, Elegos. Hmm, you have a charm and a message from, uh, a Puckno Pucky? Pucky. Puckno Pucky. You say? Cunning rogue, am I? Ha ha ha! I suppose I must explain. Puck no Pocky and I go back uh, back a long way. And to when at first I took up the harp, I made a promise to him then, and one that I have yet to make it good on. Puck no Pocky has long desired that I remain in the twelve wood, twelve wood to sing for the rest of my days. Gradably have I have been ill able to oblige him. Duty called, you see battlefields to stand upon and comrades to protect. Moreover, an event came to pass that rendered my being in the Twelveswood problematic. I thought that by taking eager souls such as you under my wing, mayhap I would suffice to appease P Paki. Of course, he saw straight through my little ruse. What the Mughals lack in grace, they, they aptly make up in wit. 
Creatures are great lovers of song. That you return with this charm is proof positive of this high regard for your potential as bard and archer both. The charm is a crystal known as the soul of the bard. But no Paki asks that I that you bring it to me, I be meant for you to have it. Gift from the Mughals, showed upon those who seem wary of walking the path of a true bard. The soul of the bard harbors memories of the past, verses and refrains sung by the bards of old. As you gain in worldly experience, more of these memories will find expression through your being, imbuing your song with powers of untold. Now it may surprise you to hear that bowmen and bards are of are as next of kin. The same token, mastery of song is dependent upon one's prowess as an archer. The sense in this will not will be lost upon you at first, but in time the realization will don don that bow and harp are but stringed instruments played by the same hand. Go now, Elagos, and let your body and soul drink upon the memories of old. And next with me, I hope to see a fully-fledged bard standing before me, one who proceed exceeds even Pucknopaki's wildest expectations. The next bard quest will be available from John Deal upon reaching level 35, which you already have. The quest is to learn the action perform is now available from Simkin at Mikut. Mikoti uh, Amphitheater in Old Gridania. Melody sung by the bards of old. Something. Valid. Now I can bard. Now I can actually wear my my mog. Not like bardy. Ah, that glint of determination in your eyes is a testament of your newfound strength. You put me in mind, mind of my salad days, hey, Salagos. You would know why I truly abandoned the battlefield and became a bard. That I took an arrow to the knee is what most fe most folk believe, and it's quite clear that you are not most you are not most folk. Oh well, I shan't insult your intelligence with an untruth. For now, allow me to answer by saying that everything in creation is given to change, and man, most of all, I have drawn, I was drawn to the power of song, the power to touch the very souls of men, and decided that I must pursue. Sadly, that power has been all but forgotten in this age of cynicism. Such songs as these performed in, by tavern bards serve no purpose beyond the amusement of drunkards. But that is not always the way of it. There were times when song could shape the outcome of conflict. Yet ever since nations first quarreled, armies uh, had fielded archers wherewith they rained death upon the enemy from f afar. The battle unfolded, however, the distinction between the lines of friend and foe would grow hazy, yet the archer's part did not end there. He had to stay alert, with arrow knocked and eyes trained upon the struggle. Even as his comrades fell, turning the earth red with their blood, the archer would ill afford to avert his gaze, lest that moment cost another his life. One need not have a vivid imagination to appreciate the torment of emotions that raged within him at the moment. Nerves near to fraying, his breast fit to burst, the archer did the only thing he could sing. Could. He sang. His bow became a makeshift instrument, plucked as an accompaniment. At first, the archer sang only to stir 
still the roiling within, but his voice changed to carry to his comrades, inspired those engaged in combat, lending strength to their sword arms, and to those who lay upon the precipice of death, it granted a measure of peace. Realizing the tactical potential, technical potential of song, yet loath to set aside skilled archers for the, that purpose, armies began raising dedicated regiments of minstrels. But the members of most units were no warriors, Ellie. Fair of voice and nimble of finger, these career minstrels would find a place in the hall of any lord. Yet they knew not of the burden borne by those who charge into battle, whose lot whose lot is in dance with death and sup on pain, and so their songs rang hollow, holding no power over the hearts of men. In eastern Lenosha, spirits were said to haunt the trees of rain country Gali. I would ask you to travel there and await the emergence of these spectres. Through force of arms, you are to release the spirits from their tormented existence, and in doing, ease their unfathomable suffering. With such a deed, it might draw you forth an ancient melody the soul of the bard. So. Work next. Oh no. Not again. At least I'm in barred where this. In general, while I wear equip the equipment of hats, like on my character sheet, can't show right now because of the lag. Um, I like hiding my head, especially when you have the helps. There are times in WoW where I, I want to see my face. Handsome row. Very proud. I the nose I went with quote normal more of a normal on the rose instead of that kind of like flat nose that a lot of rows have. Yay, I'm moving. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> when you're not synced to the level, things go really quickly when you're much higher level. By the way, leveling uh, battle jobs is so much harder than like crafting. It. Crafting, gathering. Especially when you don't have the MSQ to run through. 
MSQ actually feels more active than trying to do it outside of it. And renewing. Welcome back, Elegos. In your eyes, I see a layer of understanding, of regret of f and of futility. In your heart, and it now echo. And in your heart, it now echoes with the strains of an old song we covered. Embrace the song, and as you play it in battles, shall ever more powerful emotions be set and temper your soul. When your stock of tales have grown, grown, pray return and regale me with the stories of your adventures. Again, another reason to do job quest is because the only way you would be able to get this ability, the Warden's Paeon, would have been to do this job quest. It is good to see you return, Elegus, and more seasoned still on your time in the world. Uh, call me a spoony bard, but as a man in the winter of his years, it gives me great joy to observe an adventurer in the spring of his. It is an odd time of recollection, and there would be a spring day when the bard first came to my hometown. He played the most sorrowful chords, even as his words tantalized the ears with the breath of one's first love. Such a maiden's heart. Many a maiden's heart was stolen upon during his visit, and doubtless more besides. Elegus, would you believe that common bards, too, are b were born of archers? This may seem far-fetched upon first steering, but it isn't so far a stretch. Ask yourself this. What becomes of soldiers when conflict gives way to peacetime? Some have lives they might return to, aye, but most must needs take up a new trade to make ends meet. Well, it so happens that many who had once bent the bow turn to strumming the harp. They wander the realm, singing passionately and earnestly of the war as seen through their own eyes, of sweet victories and bitter defeats, of sacrifice and cowardice. Their songs have so captured the imagination of the people nearly a day past that a bard was not called to perform, be it in a humble tavern or some great lord's hall. Alas, the popularity proved their downfall. Intoxicated by the attentions of the masses, the bards took to embellishing their songs to a bid to, in a bid to outdo one another. And over time, each song was shorn of verity, until the, till the bard's repertoire contained not one shred of truth. By now, you will know that such songs are no project purchase upon men's heart. There's certainly a body tune might set, f set off fits of laughter in a sailor and a sorrowful ballad summon tears from the eyes of soft-hearted maiden. Yet there are but pale, as, but pale shadows of what songs can achieve. For a blessing, this decline did not escape the notice of the Mughals. Great passions of the artists, they feared that the true power of song might be lost to mankind. So it was they labored to gather and safeguard those crystals known as the souls of the bard that they might be bestowed upon worthy men and women. Now, well, as I know you relish listening to my sermons, I dare say it's past time you moved on to the practical side of the lesson. I know I have mentioned this previously, but tell me, are you per perchance familiar with the ballad of the Vainglorious Fool? Eh? Well, that won't do at all. I must ready this post haste. The song recounts the massacre of Griffin's Crossing, a battle that took place decades past, when countless Gridanian lives came to a premature end. Ah, but do not forgive me. I seem to have mistaken the, po the proper order of things. But do forgive me. I had misplaced the proper order of things. Before I begin, I must be, con be convinced that the point of the tale will not be lost upon you. Elsewise, it would be a waste of my breath in the telling of it. Now, heed the well these instructions. You must make your way to Welwick Wood, where, res where resides a mated pair of Ald Aldgoats that have but recently lost a kid. The pair have been driven mad with grief, and only death will put an end to the uncontrolled rampage. Is linger in their territory until you encounter the beasts that then let fly your arrows of mercy. You liberate them from their sorrow, so too shall your soul resonate with the echoes of poignant melody. And Thanalyn, I believe. Or 
probably could. I think somebody DC'd. That was quick. Welcome back, Hello Ghost. It's almost here. I could almost hear the cries of warning that have seared themselves into your soul. That you remain unbowed by such anguish as a testament of your spirit's fortitude. Yet, even as your heart swells to contain those new experiences, you must not neglect your skills with the bow. A resilient heart must needs have a robust body in which to beat. Once you have uh, trained. Both in equal strength, then shall I perform to you the ballad of the Vainglorious Fool. The army can. Again, another reason why you need to do all your job quests. <laughs> Welcome back, Alegos. By your tranquil continence, I am plain that both your body and soul are in readiness for the next stage of your journey. Very well, the time is ripe that I teach you the ballad of the Vainglorious Fool. The song tells the tale of an archer of the God's Quiver. Peerless skill was surpassed only by his hubris. Last, that hubris led to the annihilation of his entire regiment in the battle of which came to be known as the Massacre of Griffin's Crossing. Ahem. Standing guard in dead of night, in archer wearing of the sight, drunk on pride and starved of glory, forsook his post, claim victory. Ten score yams had the archer crept, when shrieks rang out whence his comrades slept, for he was not there to see the knives. Nor to ring the bell and save friends' lives. Tell me, Alagos, what lessons can we learn from this tale? Ah, but hold that thought. That your tongue claims to understand interests me not. As before, I sooner have you demonstrate the fruits of your learning, with bow in hand. This time, however, you shall have the pleasure of my company. I would have you escort me to the... The Mora Ruins in the North Shroud. It is there that some few fallen from the massacre of Griffin's Crossing has been laid to rest. Pray, honor this place of remembrance with a bouquet of lilies. Feed me, O puissant Alec. 
Cast thee back the reins of the firmament, that you might gaze upon the battles of yore. All right, let's see how this goes. The enemy van? No, I, I cannot. Why, why do I still draw breath? That a sin of the past would beget another. Forgive me, Elegos. As you have doubtless noticed, I'm no longer able to wield, capable of wielding a bow. 
I, whom they call the God's Bow. I had hoped that the years would have taken the edge off the memories, but I hoped in vain. Absolution does not come so easily. Heed me a well, Elegus, for I shall reveal all to you. The man sung in the ballad of the Vangalorius fool, the Subus doomed an entire regiment. He and I are one and the same. Being so no stranger to the bow, you would know that the archer's role in battle is that of support. His charge is to thin out the enemy line, and his comrades might gain ground in the field of battle. But that most basic of criteria, I was unfit to hold a bow from the first. In my pride and lust for glory, they sent countless souls to a bloody grave. Good men and women all, but with loved ones and bright futures awaiting them. I lost the will to live that day, becoming an empty husk of a man, tormented in sleep and wakefulness, both by the memories of my cry. But the gods are not without mercy. They gifted me with song, and I might find a measure of solace in my wretched existence. A new melody resounds within you, I see. Though this outing is rather far departed from what I had in mind, but it still bore fruit. On that note, let us conclude the lesson. I say I have no cause to worry that you will repeat the selfsame mistake as the glorious. Elagos, I would be alone for a while. Take yourself back to camp. I'll make my own way there presently. Light distraction from that. <laughs> All it is. I'm glad to see you safely returned, though I rasp my voice hoarse uh, through the saying of it. I cannot tell you enough times how much I regret dragging you into such danger. Yet there is more I would ask you. If you would be doing the kindness and lending your ear, then pray speak now. Rain of Death, which I used previously. <laughs> You'll listen to my request. Request, though you know, know me as the Vainglorious Fool, am I? Humbled. The boon I ask of you is simple. Have you sing for me? Outfelt performance masterly delivered. Could have at least like show me playing the harp or something and with my mouth moving or something. 
You've come far in such a short time, my young apprentice. Singing your song this day, I'm convinced that you you are well in a way to surpass me, Bard and Archer both. Soon there will be naught left for me to impart to you. Elegos, you have proven yourself worthy of the cons consecrated garments woven by the true bards of old to honor the keeper. I speak of the choral attire. The attire has trusted me when Puck Lupaki and I first met, deeper than the twelve wood. Lugal and I had traded scarce more than a handful of words when he proffered me the, in the attire along with the soul of the bar. At that time, I knew not the true power of song, and so declined the gifts. But Pukno Paki would not be denied. For all his good humor, the Moogle can be as unmoving as a rock. The attire chooses the wearer, not the other way around, he insisted. I found myself yielding to his will. In mastering the verses of war, I won a claim beyond my wildest dreams upon the field of battle. And for the time, I have was well pleased. Alas, my lust for glory knew no bounds with the consequ consequence of which we were already aware. It was in the wake of the massacre of Griffin's co Crossing, stricken with guilt. I wanted not more than the earth to open up to swallow me whole. Lost the will to live, I. I had no craven. I was no too craven to end it myself. And so I took to wandering aimlessly in search of a place to die, far away from the judging eyes of men. Disillusioned with the power of song, I committed an act of folly. I scattered the choral attire across the realm. If truly the attire chooses its wearer, I challenged, then let it find its way back to me. Determined that I would not be pro proven wrong, I went to great pains to ensure the attire would never again see the light of day. Pieces now rest in places of peril. Being the proud fool that I was, I it never crossed my mind that may happen another was meant to don it. I would entrust the coral attire to you, Elegos, but as you can see, you must needs brave the dangers to claim it. Don't mark its whereabouts on your map, and I can afford you no further aid beyond that. I am deeply sorry for my that my folly of years past has uh, entailed this burden upon you, but Alec Althic works in mysterious ways. In his wisdom, it may be that he has sent this trial to test your spirit. I mean not for your sentiments to encumber you, but I am convinced that you are the one chosen for, by the coral attire. Not wearing coral attire, that's not my mog. I don't, honestly, I don't. <laughs> but pray do not take that as a license of complacency. Trials wouldn't be called such if they failed to tax one's abilities. Stay ever on your toes, other ghosts. I would have you return whole of body and bearing the four parts of my surrendered ring. Well, there's one over here, so let's grab that quickly.
This is a 45 quest, right? So this is also another factor is the usually the 45 quest is about getting four pieces or uh, class set. And then the 50 is the, the final best piece. We got gloves, sandals, glove shoes, pants. Last but not least. Oh, we got lag again. I know because the map's not appearing. We'll see how far I go. Do 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 do. You did. Oh, man. There we go. Because I can fly, this makes this quest pretty much like a lot easier.
So you've returned. Sound of body and mind, I trust. And you bear four parts of the coral attire. I knew you were the true owner of these garments. I uh, heard your song. Since the day we met, your determination has reminded me of much of what I have lost. Again. I have at last settled my heart on a matter that has plagued me for some decades. When my preparations are complete, I shall know of my decision. Well then, may your song lift the spirits of your allies and your arrows seek the hearts of your foes. is going for battle hey getting two and a half hours for for this first part i suppose that it'd probably be a lot quicker once i get into to the expansions we'll see you have done well my young apprentice in returning with the coral tie you've affirmed my faith in you i have no further reason to withhold from you the existence of the final piece of the set the piece that has brought us together Listen well, Elegus. When I put down my bow, I vowed never again to set foot on the Twelvewood. That I now forsake my oath is of no other reason than to impart my knowledge to one who would succeed me. Lest you wonder why I would deem that so important, permit me to relate to you an event that would brought about a great change in me. My most recent journey had taken me to Ildar, where I found myself ambling through the marketplace early one morn. Browsing the wares on display, mine eyes were met with a relic from my past. A piece of the coral attire that I had discarded decades before, countless moms away. I felt at once that it was not mere chance that it reunited with me, and put forth the coin that, with nary a pause. Holding the garment in my hand, I resolved to find a worthy heir to my legacy. Alas, no sooner I had arrived in this world's wood than I found myself mobbed by archers seeking to hone their skills. Amongst those who came, not a one showed the least interest in poetry and verse. Sorely discouraged and regretting my decision, made to strike camp and leave the Twelve Woods once more, never to return. It was then that you appeared, young one. When you expressed your desire to learn the story, the song, I could scarce contain my joy. Looking back, I'm fully convinced that our meeting had been preordained. Your coming has instilled with me the courage to attend that matter of which I spoke early. I am ready. Ready to make a pilgrimage to the scene of my regiment's demise. Ever since that fateful day, I have been haunted by visions of my fallen comrades, tormented, torment graven upon their bloodied faces. Lost to hope that, but too craven to end my own life, I wandered the land endlessly, seeking a place to die, but the heavens denied me even that. Yet, just, as, just when I seemed that despair would draw me wholly into its black abyss, never to emerge again, a melody resounded within me. It was then that I awakened to the power of song and found new purpose. I embarked upon a journey to master such verses as, as would bestow peace upon the fallen, and I might lay the tormented souls of my comrades to rest. It had taken long years, and now I believe I can offer a requiem worthy of my comrades. To do so, however, I require one last favor of you, Elagos. I would have you escort me to the west of the observatorium in the Curthus Central Highlands. It was there that we shall find the scene of my regiment's demise. Your presence kindles within me a courage I had thought, thought lost. I would have none other by my side as I undertake this pilgrimage, now as I entered the most daunting stage of my life. Once you arrive, I ask that you pay your respects with another bouquet of Nemea lilies. When my recommendation is sung, you shall have the final piece of the choral attire.
Off to Kurthus. Central Iron. I always get disoriented when I come here. Here we go, into a solo duty. I mean, it's not really solo, I've got like... We are surrounded and our foes seem disinclined to listen to parley. You must survive this, Elagos. My soul is unburdened with the deaths of too many your companions. Because you must not fall. Hear my song and be invigorated. And the ghost, without you, I would not be standing here this day. I thank you for the bottom of my heart. Forgive me, my friend. I've kept you waiting, waiting over long. Keep a be praise. I, I can yield the bow once more. It was you, young one, who helped me to remember how. I have known this for some time, but your presence is as a salve for, for the wounds of my soul. Your coming has delivered me from the nightmares of my past. My worthy successor, to you I entrust the final piece of the court attire. Don it and go forth to fill the hearts of men with courage and purpose. No, those seasons may turn, bend a man's, bending a man's back and dimming his eye, so long as there's life, there's reason to hope. Thank you, Elagos, for showing me the truth of this.
With the blood of my comrades upon my hands, do simp simply draw breath racked me with such guilt as I could not bear. But the time for mourning is past. I shall take up the bow once more and lend what I can to the gods' quiver in fighting for those who yet live. I, I do my fallen comrades the greatest honor. And yet another melody resounds within you, I see. Then there is not more I can impart to you as equals. Let us together give praise to life and all the joy that it brings. Heed me, O oh poisoned Elphic. Turn thee over the hourglass of time that we may exult in the glory of something. In thine exalted name we sing with the living may save a life and the departed no true peace. In thine... Uh, same thing. Doesn't change. Your compassion unlocks echoes of an ancient melody within you. I thank you again, Elikos. You have bested, uh, blessed this old fool with the gentle touch of salvation. Eorzea waits. Go forth now and inspire endless hope and courage with the beauty of your songs. May we one day meet again. You hear a faint voice, Cade, and the winds of time, and you get battle voice. This concludes the bard quest for Final Fantasy XIV, The Realm Reborn. In order to undertake the next series of quests, you must meet the following requirements. You must have completed the main scenario quest before the dawn. Once you have done so, the next bard quest will be available from the Huntil. Which we had. And that! Is a bard. I see the coral tire. I think it's there. somewhere. Probably. Actually, yeah. For reasons, I'm gonna pop over to a. Remember, I don't have the hat. The hat is very. Ostentatious. With the word, I mean, maybe. So if I'm doing every all the jobs in alphabetical order. Why haven't I done astrology, which would have be would have been A. I did alchemist, I did armor. Why would the next not be astrology? Well, that's because it wasn't around until heaven's word. Although technically it does have a quest line from 30 to 50, but uh, I'm going to include that from when it was actually. Alive. So take a look at the glamour plates here. There we go. This is the actual coral attire. Looks kind of like this. Now, in during the low uh, fifty quest, you get an uh, an additional one. Hard same, coral same. Which all it is is a recolor. So, like this would be be the coral attire, and the bard's one 
Thanks. Yes. <laughs> it's awful. I hate it. it. It looks bad. I keep it because I can't get rid of it. Um, taking this for the barn, but. Up next, uh, we are going over to Black Mage, which, of course, in order to do Black Mage, I need to start with uh, Thaumaturge. But we'll do that next. I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to take a break. A half hour break. That's around. In bed. 